So I've been working on the um, RDMX code and I've got some improvements to to the code but I thought quickly I'd go through how it works and how it's been implemented um, and then I'll explain some improvements that I've made with uh, some error detection and um, I fixed a, a bug in the code. So uh, let's quickly look at the serial uh, protocol. So the serial protocol um, basically is, is on one wire. It's set up at both ends um, with the same setup and that setup includes your, your bit rate or your board rate. Um, it also includes how many uh, data bits you want, whether you want parity and how many stop bits uh, you want and that's defined at both ends. So the the actual communications itself or along the actual the wire um, it's high so plus 5 or plus I think serial might be plus 12 but let's work in TTL logic so high when idle then there's uh, one start bit which is low which indicates that there is uh, a frame or a packet coming um, then we send the, the data which is usually 8 bits but sometimes it can be 7 bits um, I know keyboards sometimes use 7 bits with 1 bit parity but uh, usually 8 bits then uh, a parity bit if it's part of the definition of, of the protocol um, uh, then 2 stop bits or 1 stop bit um, which is high uh, and then it, it goes high when idle and that's it basically and then it just loops around and you send it byte by byte or packet by packet or frame by frame depending on how many bits you're putting in each uh, each bit of data. If the controller sees a low for more than 9 or 10 bits um, it's defined differently in different controllers I believe and um, it causes an error on the controller so it flags an error bit in a register somewhere um, and that's quite important um, we'll be using that as part of the DMX uh, and this is what it would look like. So here I've I've got red is high, blue is low, and then green is either high or low for data. So you'd start over here. So you've got high because it's idle, a start bit, then some data, then a stop bit, and then a high and idle again, I guess. Uh, a, a low for a start bit, some data, and then high, well, a stop bit, and then high for idle uh, again. So that's, that's a serial protocol, um, or that's one definition of the serial protocol. It can change between how many data bits and parity, etc., etc. Um, but that's a default. So the DMX protocol is a little bit more complicated. Um, it starts with a break, which is um, it's a long, low period, um, which will cause the error. Um, after the break, there is a, a mark after break, which is a, a high period. Um, then we have a, a low start bit. Then we have Eight bits of data being the start code, um, which is zero for DMX dimmer data. Um, it's different for like RDM. Uh, then we have two stop bits. Then we have a mark between frames, which is just a high period, so it's almost like our idle um, in the serial in, in serial protocol. And then for each channel or each frame that we want to send within the packet, we have a, a start bit which is low, uh, eight data bits, and then two stop bits which are high. And then we have a mark between frames, which is uh, just another high period. And then after the last channel, um, we have the mark between packets, which is just uh, a high period. And then um, it will be followed by the next break, which is uh, a low period. So it's not too dissimilar from the serial protocol. Um, the only thing that isn't part of the serial protocol, really, is this break at the beginning. Other than that, this bit is serial, and uh, this bit is serial data. So graphically, this is how it would look. Um, so starting here, it would be high when idle. Then we'd have our break, which would be a low period. It has to be at least 22 bits low. Um, then we have our mark off the break, which is a high period. Um, I can't remember how high it has to be, but one of the, the links in the description will have the exact numbers for that. Then we have our start code, which is a start bit, followed by eight low data bits for DMX dimmer data. Then we have two stop bits, and then we have a start bit, and then our eight bit data for our first channel, and then it repeats, obviously, for every channel up to our last channel, which is down here on the bottom right. And then after our last channel's data has been sent, it goes high, which is our idle, or our mock between packets, uh, and then it would start again with another break. 
Um, so the DMX protocol doesn't have to send all 512 channels. It can send, I think it can send just one, but that would be a little bit pointless. But it can send certainly less than 512 channels to the devices. So uh, let's have a look at how this is actually implemented within the uh, within the RDMX code. So this, this code I'm displaying here on the uh, right hand side is actually my updated code so it's got a few extra features but the, the bulk of it is actually the same as uh, the original. So I've just got a pin out at the top uh, which we'll come back to. Um, I've changed how we define how many channels um, because I've referenced to it in a few bits. I've changed um, our, our GDMX states um, so idle, break, start code and my addresses, it was slightly different before, it's just a little bit, doesn't really matter, just different names. Um, this is also with error correction which we'll come back to. In our uh, setup, we basically call our serial um, library within our Arduino and we're just using the serial uh, library because effectively the DMX is just a serial um, data transmission so we can use it. Um, but it's a little bit different. Uh, we set our GDMX state to idle because that's where we want it to start with. We need a DMX start address and then um, this is to do with my output and this is all to do with error, error um, detection stuff. So this is our interrupt. So this is the interesting bit. So the interrupt is called, um, so the interrupt code runs whenever or after a byte of data after a start bit which is a low. So the Arduino gets a low start bit, receives a byte of data, puts it in a register, then it calls the interrupt subroutine. Um, okay, so within this, we're just gonna have a DMX counter, which we're gonna implement as a counter of which channel's data we are receiving, because obviously in, in the DMX protocol, you don't send the address of, or you don't send the channel and then its value, you just send the values and you assume that the receiving devices do the counting of which channel is which value. Uh, these three lines of code just grab, well, these two grab register information from registers and just write them to uh, more friendly names um, or into RAM. The uh, DMX state we're going to reload from, from that just to increase a bit of speed as, as per the original RDMX code. So if we got into here we've received a low bit. So the first thing we need to know is, are we at a break? Um, so this essentially is like a, a state machine. So this if else and all these if else is. So this is basically a state machine. So it does something whenever it is in one of our four states. Um, well, it does anything if it's in one of our three states or there's an error. So the first one is to look for the error. So the only time we actually get the error is if we've got a break. So the break is the start of the packet. So once if we've got an error, this uh, FE0 is our error register, or our error bit. Um, and that, that gets changed basically if there is a break. So if there's a break, this was true and this code runs. So we'll set our, our GDMX state to, to break to say that we've just had a break. We're going to set our counter, or reset our counter to our DMX start address. So we're actually going to count down rather than count up. Uh, and this is to do with error stuff, so we're going to come back to that in a minute. So if we've had our break, the next thing we should be expecting, if we've got DMX code, is our start code. So we've set our DMX state to break. We've received another packet come in. So it's gone to here, and this code runs here. So we look for our byte, and we say, is it zero? Is it our start code that we're looking for? If it is, then we're going to set our GMX um, state to start code. Ignore the error for the moment. Um, if it's not, we're just going to ignore the data, and um, we're just going to uh, idle, basically. We're going to set it back to idle, and then the state machine won't run again until we get another break. Okay, so if we've received our start code, uh, our DMX state is set to start code. So then we receive our, our first channel data. So we go into this bit, our DMX state is then start code. So we run this code. So we 
decrement our counter and then we say is it zero so basically this is our counting down to our start channel um, so it's only zero when we hit our, our start channel so let's assume for one moment that we have hit our start channel then um, basically we're going to pull that data and we're going to put it in our DMX RX field which is our array which stores our uh, DMX values for our, our fixture um, we're going to reset our counter because we're going to use that for any subsequent channels that come in and this line or these two lines here are to do with a bug that I found um, which I'll go into in a bit more but basically in the original code let's assume that we've got more than one channel on our fixture so we've received our first channel we've put it into our register um, our array and then we're going to set our GMX state to my addresses um, which then when we receive our next byte of data it's going to come in interrupt and basically then it will go into this part of the code which is the last LCIF of, of the interrupt and this will basically put that next channel of data that comes in into our array for the, for the next channel um, and then basically we, we say is that our last channel so is that because we've started counting up because here we're incrementing our counter if it's our last channel then um, this would be true and then we'll set our GMX state to idle and let's uh, do error correction again or error detection again so the other thing we could do potentially is come in uh, with a channel um, it's part of our start code we come in from our start code and it's not the, uh, the data so it's not a channel that we're after so we're just going to ignore it and that is our interrupt subroutine um, so that's how it works and obviously at any point if there's a break it, it just goes back to the beginning because this is an if not an if else and all of the others require it to sequentially come through those stages before it will get to, to the last stage so that's the pretty much the implementation of how it works so things I've added to this code is some error detection and I've found well I've calculated or worked out three possible errors that um, could occur. So error one, as I've called it, is that there is too great a time period between frames or uh, basically that there is no DMX coming in. Um, so you can define how long this is in the code. Um, so let's go through error one and I'll explain how it works. So error one works on a basis of a timer or a countdown timer. It's not a real timer. Um, it doesn't actually count time, it just counts cycles and they're not Arduino processing cycles, they are cycles of code. So this is where we set up our error, whether it's true or false. Um, we're going to set up a variable timer and we're going to set a default uh, error 1 time uh, 500. I've tested this with between 100 and 2000. Uh, 100 doesn't cause um, flashing uh, and 2000 is relatively long to not be receiving DMX for so in between those values seems to work uh, so let's go down to the code so what we're going to do is in our setup we're going to set our timer to our default timer time so we're going to set it to a high number and then what we're going to do down here in the uh, void loop is this bit here so this is not a real timer so what we're going to say is if the timer is zero then we've, we've hit the bottom and the error is true so we've counted basically from that timer down to zero and uh, therefore we've got an error so we're going to set it to true um, if we haven't hit zero we're still somewhere between our default time and zero so we're going to decrement our timer and then we're going to delay it by one millisecond so obviously a delay isn't 
ideal for what we're doing or for recept- receiving DMX code because it, it means that there can be a delay calling um, our, you know, updating our, our outputs. So it's less than ideal. If your updating your outputs took slightly longer, you could use that as the delay and then just comment out this line and it would uh, would work. Uh, and the last thing for, well, not the second to last thing for error one is uh, this line here, which is basically telling uh, writing an LED either to high or low, depending on whether that, that error is true or false. And the last thing, the actual last thing of this code is actually up here in the break section. So if we receive a break, then we've received a packet of DMX code, or we've received something which should be DMX code. So what we're going to do is every time we receive a uh, new break, is we're going to reset our timer to its default time and we're going to set that error to false. So obviously if you had a really poor line that was just going high, low, high, low, it may cause error one to trigger. But it's probably more useful than it is a hindrance to have this error within the code. Okay, so our second error is our non-dimmer DMX received, which is actually our simplest error. Basically, if we've got non-dimmer data, our start code isn't going to be zero. So if we go to our, uh, this is our, our after our break, this piece of code is the interrupt that we use. So if our, our DMX start byte is zero, indicating a normal start code, then obviously we, we carry on with our uh, interrupt, but we're going to set our error to false. So error two equals false. If it's not zero, so it might be an RDM packet or it might be just incorrect DMX data or something like that, then we're going to ignore the rest of our data by going to the idle um, and we're going to set our error 2 to true. And then again, like error 1, we've just got an output line here which uh, turns an LED on or off depending on whether that error is true or false. And the last error is the last channel not being received. So in our code again, up at the top, we defined how many channels we're looking at or looking for, and we also define in our in our setup our start address. So in my previous video, I was using the six channel, well, trans controller, and it only had six channels. So it's possibly only outputting six DMX data values into the data chain. So if we were looking, for instance, say we were looking for a seven channel fixture, it might receive channels one to six, but then it might not receive channel seven. So this is what error three is looking for. So um, again, up here, we've, we define our error three stuff, but we're gonna define it in two parts. So S error three and error three. So we're gonna look at S error three first. So S error three, it starts in our break and in our break we're going to say that this error is true being true means that we haven't received our last packet uh, our last channel um, that we're looking for and then down here in our more addresses bit well not our more addresses bit well, yeah it is actually in our more addresses bit if we do receive our last channel that we're looking for we're going to set it back to false and like up here, we've, uh, when I fix this bug, this will become apparent in, in a minute, but I've also set it to false. So if we've received our last channel, I've set it to false. Okay, then the next time we run a break, if it's set to true, we're gonna set error three to true. And then we're gonna reset S error three to true for the next cycle of code. So basically this is looking at, well, error three, is set here to the value of the S error three from the previous packet. So if there was an error, AKA our last channel wasn't received, then error three becomes true. And then we can output it in a similar fashion down here again to an LED. Uh, and then the three errors that I could think of, I'm not really sure if there's any more that would be relatively simple to implement. So if there is, let me know, uh, and I'll see if I can write them in. 
So the last thing is I found a bug within the uh, RDMX code. And this bug is to do with um, one channel reception. So if you set your uh, array to only receive one channel, or you set your fixture to only be one channel's worth of data, I found that it was glitching some of the time on my Arduino. And the problem comes, or the problem came about from down here. So after our start code, if we received our first channel of data, this only handles the first channel of data, and then it passes the original version. The GMX state gets set to this next state of our state machine, and it runs the next code on our next channel, which is kind of okay, but as I say, I was getting glitches. So I've added this basic if in here to say that if we receive our first channel, great, let's put it into our uh, array. If we're only looking for one channel, then we're just going to copy the code up from here. This is our last channel code. Uh, and we're going to go to an idle state. And our S error is or S error 3 is false because we have received our last last channel's data. If we're not one channel, then we're going to carry on as before. And that fixed that that glitch for me. So that was um, pretty much uh, all I found in terms of bugs. I haven't been able to break it again since um, I quickly put it into one channel mode. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I will upload my um, my latest Arduino sketch um, to my website. Uh, I will upload the hardware serial .cpp again um, because it is necessary. And um, if you liked or found this video useful, um, please thumbs up or uh, subscribe to my channel for more future videos on a similar similar stuff and. Um, if you've got any comments or wish to know any more or find an error in this code, please leave it in the comments below and uh, I'll look into it. Cheers.